Hey, it's Valerie Reified, as it always is. There's a bitchin' thunderstorm going on right now outside, which is kind of cool to watch. But, you know, uh, I have a short attention span, so the internet, it, uh, it's what's for dinner. Behind me is my girlfriend, Morgan. Um, she is cute. She also has a YouTube account. What is your YouTube account, honey? Um, I think it was Morgana420. Morgana420. Um, yeah, she's, she's a really, really big even numbers enthusiast. Um, anyway, so to reply to the, uh, the questions that are, well, question number, number one, um, about privilege and losing it. I don't know. Um, one, I mean, I had that previous, uh, previous post that I made where I say, you know, I think we trans people not just get educated differently, but also on a less overt level get gendered differently, even before transition. Um, and second, let me relate to you my general experiences in customer service at a financial services company or rapacious usurer, as, uh, as would be more accurate. Um, customer comes in with a check and they're like, hey buddy, how's it going? And this is back in boy mode. So I say, I say, okay, they pass me the check. I look at the check. Oh, I can't cash it because it's three in the morning and you haven't cashed before. Story of my life, story of yours. But this gentleman will take umbrage. Um, and he will once again, you know, have some sort of gendered uh, kind of say, hey buddy, hey man, you gotta help me out, you know? Help a brother, help a bro ham something thing. I don't know. I don't get men. Broseph, okay. <laughs> Thank you, Morgan. Um, and then I'll say no, I'm sorry. <laughs> and they called me a fat prick and stormed out. That was a pretty common occurrence. Then I started to get gendered female. And it was, hey dear, hey sweetheart, hey lovely. Um, again, gendered, you know, uh, gendered greeting. I'd tell them no, you know, once again, there'd be the same sort of gendered plea. I'd say no again, and they'd call me a fat bitch or a fat cunt. So that was the big difference. Now, don't get me wrong, there's two different sets of, um, of cultural teaching they're trying to access. You know, when they perceive you as male, it's, you know, a real man won't let himself be governed by other people. Um, when it's female, it's a nice woman isn't going to get in the way um, of someone who needs help. Um, oh, there was one less, one, one thing that did change. Um, the accusations of uh, the accusations of sexism were slightly reduced. Um, women were f far less likely to um, demand my manager's name and number and threaten my job. So what I'm saying is that in that interaction, um, graveyard worker and person there with you know a large check, um, that it's much more of a class issue. Most of these things about privilege, I'm, I'm sorry, taking out your watch and not having to, you know, have it minute accurate? Uh, I don't know. Maybe you just set your watch accurately. Um, and maybe also um, it has to do with the degree to which you conform now to gender expectations as opposed to previously. <sighs> I, yeah. I'm going to agree with some of the commenters. It's like, if male privilege is being 13 out of 14 workplace fatalities and living seven years shorter and being more likely to work 40, 50, 60, and 80 hour weeks, being more likely to have spent two years out in the cold uh, or exposed to the elements at your job, um, let's see, uh, being more likely to relocate to away from urban areas, you know, there's a reason there's uh, a lot of men in Alaska, you know, it's a sausage fest there. 
Not in a fun way. Um. Yeah. A lot. A, a lot of what. A lot of the wage gap and the prestige. Um, the prestige gap is. Men have managed to trick themselves into working ridiculous hours in ridiculously dangerous fields for slightly more pay because they need the prestige because well let me put it this way anyone who's attracted to to women would you would you consider marrying a woman who didn't work anyone who's attracted to men would you consider marrying a man who didn't work both of them unemployed perhaps subsistence supported by the state no the men are the losers that's the the expectation is that men work and we can say that's insulting to women um, I suppose to some extent it is I think it's insulting to anyone in uh, our post-industrial age to say that you know ha that we have to work more than 30 hours a week to keep ourselves fed and clothed it's kind of ridiculous um, yeah, these these discussions on privilege are, I won't say it doesn't exist, because there are people who have certain expectations and like their world to be, you know, um, dominated by gender. But again, these things aren't only unidirectional. Um, class matters a lot. You know, we can ask why most congressmen and most CEOs are men. It's like most of the people who work 80 hour weeks are men. Um, women tend to, and I'm not saying in all cases, tend to favor work life balance. So, you know, I mean, that we value leisure um, costs us, I don't think, too much considering, you know, when we control 51% of the votes and, and more than 51% of the purchasing power. It's really hard to say as a group that we're oppressed. Um, there are definite, you know, misogynistic policies out there, especially especially for those of you who live in the United States, um, or those of you who are trans. Um, there's a lot of misogyny when it intersects with transness. It's um, it's interesting. I mean, there are there are reasons that men aren't required to have phalloplasty in a lot of jurisdictions to be recognized as men, but women are required to have vaginoplasty. Um, you know, there's mitigating factors that reduce the, the reasonableness of requiring it of men, but also, frankly, there's less anxiety. Um, there's, there's a much stricter row to hoe. Um, and transitioning to female, and and oddly enough, far more latitude for presentation when one's female, um, or perceived as female more accurately. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, and I haven't even started to talk about the suicide gap, and I don't know how much of that is is driven by um, by transness. Um, or not, it would be an interesting discussion, um, but we'd need more accurate population figures, both for trans women and trans men, because, you know, if, if men are beating women, uh, if male suicides are beating female suicides at a rate of two and three to one, um, does that say something about how alienating society is to um, men who aren't conformist, or is it something about the the gendered expectation that they should lay down their lives rather than humiliate themselves i don't understand um completely all the mechanisms behind it but i will say this i know for certain it's not unidirectional and it is not as simple as you think um oh and class matters so that is that is my summary um long-winded reply over